Please welcome Chief Executive Officer of Automation Works, Ida Bird Hill. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to ask one question as people are moving around in the room. How many is the talent shortage keeping you up at night? Raise your hand. Because I know it's keeping me up at night, every night. And people go, why? Because I'm not an automotive manufacturer. I'm not a healthcare company. I'm not even a retail tailor. I'm a trainer. But the reason why it's keeping me up at night, because I know that as an economist, every region is in a global competition. And the region that has the most middle-skilled STEM workers, science, technology, engineering, and math, that's the region that's going to win. So we're in a major global competition for our survival, and even for the automotive survival. So we need more middle-skilled STEM workers. Now, we talk about that all day long, but oftentimes we don't identify who is a middle-skilled STEM worker. A computer programmer? a mechatronics specialist, an x-ray specialist, a cybersecurity individual, and any one of those that we consider our technological worker bees. We need those for our survival. So what I am asking our leaders to do, both government and business, is look to the stars. You're going thinking, what does astronomy have to do with STEM? I'm not asking you to look to the sky. I'm asking you to look to individuals who are skilled through alternative routes. Yes, there are a lot of individuals who are getting their training from other places. In fact, I am one of those individuals. While I have two degrees, a bachelor's in economics from the University of Michigan, go blue, go blue, and an MBA, I began my career as an individual who got skilled through an alternative route. And let me tell you my story. First of all, I was born to two high school dropouts. I have to make that important because I have two degrees. But my parents made sure that I had a great education, K through 12, so I can launch to college. But what was interesting, because I'm a poor student, the way poor people do things is a little different than the way rich people do things. See, we don't have money sitting aside when we go to college. We have to make our way there. So I knew that very early on. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to spend all my time at the library. But just so happens while I'm sitting at the library, I discovered the library had something called a library page. So now I can spend my time at the library and get paid for it. Isn't that ingenuous? I thought so. So you know what I did in order to get the interview? I studied the car catalog. I became known as the walking computerized catalog. I could tell you every book in the library and buy all call numbers all the time. Well, that bode me well, because at the time, they were automating the card catalog. So I got a job to be on my first automation team at 16. I think that wasn't so bad for a person in poverty, right? So I, I left that job when I graduated from high school. I did land at the University of Michigan. But I also landed at the Department of Education to computerize their card catalog, and then Ross Business School, their catalog. But as a poor student, I needed more money than work study. So I decided I needed a real job. So I went to a bank, and the only job they gave me was to be a manual check filer. Yes, there used to be people who filed your canceled checks. They filed them into a drawer. They stuck those checks into, a, in, into your statement and put them into an envelope. What a terrible job. It was horrible. But then I heard a manager who said that they were going to automate the check filing system. So I volunteered. And they looked at me and said, why? I said, because I have a background in basic Fortran and COBOL. They went from where? Self-study. You know why I did that? Because those were the dominant languages at the time, and I had planned that I was going to do business and technology at the same time. So after testing my skills in COBOL, because that's what they were programming in, they let me onto the team. But let me tell you what I learned when they let me onto the team. First of all, skills pay the bills. Because unlike my rest of my friends who were in fast food restaurants, 
I made three times on that team than what they made per hour. So we know skills pay the bills. The second thing that I learned is degrees is not the skills. See, we talk a lot about people having a degree, but while I do have two degrees, a degree does not give you skills. They teach you how to acquire knowledge. They teach you how to be swifty, but they are not exactly the same, which is why I'm asking leaders to look to individuals who are skilled through alternative routes. Because when you have fast-growing technology, a lot of times people jump in before institutions jump in to get themselves ready. Case in point, 1993, good year, year I had my twins, but it was also the year that the internet was born to the public. Now remember it specifically, because everybody said the only people who were going to gravitate to the internet were nerds like me. And they were right. But we didn't gravitate it because we loved science so much. We were trying to figure out how are we going to take the science we knew to make money. So we were in study groups. We were online programs. We went to boot camps. We went to trade schools because we were going to master and dominate that field. And we did. Right now to this day, there are 4.8 billion people on the internet. A million dollars is made a minute every minute the internet is up. And notice it never goes down. So we know that individuals who are skilled through alternative routes, they generate profit for everyone. But oftentimes, we forget about them. Most of the time, we forget about them. But here's what we don't know about them. Right now in the state of Michigan, the average salary for that individual is $98,000, 30% higher than your typical person. That's a lot of money. But here's what most people don't realize, that most of your middle skilled STEM workers, they don't have a degree. Right here in the state of Michigan. But yet, when you look at most of the job descriptions of corporate America, 70% of those job descriptions have a degree requirement. And we wonder why we're having a talent shortage. It is a mishmash. If I have middle skilled workers, like our computer programmers, who don't have a degree, but yet I have a job description on a degree, where are they going to find a job? Let me tell you where they go. Other places. I know this firsthand because I run a school, a post-secondary school, and even though I train people in the city of Detroit, the bulk of my learners I have placed in the southern U.S. corridor. But they still sit and reside in the city of Detroit because we have put degree requirements on our jobs. But here's the real truth of the matter. We are in a fight for our survival. We do not have the luxury of time. First community college person to get their degree, associate's degree. It takes six years for the average person who's getting a bachelor's degree. But they only make up in total between the two, 10% of our population. What about the other 90? That's how we're going to solve our talent shortage. We're going to look to individuals who are skilled through alternative routes, whether it is a boot camp, whether it is an online program, or whether it's a trade school like Automation Works. But we must be in a sense of urgency. How much urgency? We're talking about launching electric vehicles in the next two to five years. That is no time, which is why I'm up all night. Because I'm thinking and strategizing, how do I get more and more young people into the middle skills STEM careers? But part of it starts with us leaders making a change in who we're looking for for middle skills. And we should be looking to individuals who are skilled through alternative routes. And as you can see, there's a lot of people who are in that position. But here's what I need you to do. The first thing before you leave today, I want you to call your HR departments and find out what percentage of jobs you have in your database that have a degree requirement. Remove them. Let competition bay and be able to check out who has the skills. Number two, what I want you to do, I want you, the government leaders to look at funding a little differently. See, at one hand, we say we want middle skills STEM workers, but on the other hand, we're not funding for them. The bulk of the money goes to college institutions. Very little goes to funding institutions who are grooming individuals who are skilled through alternative routes. If we're going to challenge this talent shortage, we're going to have to leave status quo and move to a higher, faster-paced model. 
we're going to have to scale. And that means we're going to have to look at some things differently. So I am asking our leaders, all of you in this room, to look to the stars, individuals who are skilled through alternative routes. I'm looking for you to be able to understand that skills do pay the bills, whether they're from an individual perspective or whether it's from you as a company, because the company who has the greatest number of skilled workers, that is the corporation who wins. But more deeper, the, the corporations make up the state of Michigan, and those that have the greatest skilled workers, that's who wins. So I'm asking you to understand that skills pay the bills and to make some changes so that you can be able to groom the skills within your area. Thank you.